Hello everybody. In this uh, video tutorial, I want to show you how we can compare two data sets when we only have the confidence intervals for these data and we don't have any raw data. And of course, this could be a bit of a problem um, because we usually need some raw data. So how are we going to deal with that? So here are just some mock data that I made up. Let's assume paper number one claims that a certain drug at a certain concentration showed a 30% reduction in blood pressure. And here is the confidence interval that the researchers reported. That's a 95% confidence interval. So this would be between 25% and 35% reduction. And they stated the sample size n equals 16 and they found uh, that this is was observed in male patients. Now a second paper used the same drug at the same concentration and they found that in female patients they observed a 35% reduction in blood pressure and again they stated the confidence interval 32 to 38 percent and they had a much larger sample size. Now the big question is really is there a difference between these two findings? Is there a difference for example uh, between how male and female patients react? So we don't have any um, raw data and that would make it quite difficult actually to compare these data. And for comparison, I would always use a sort of a calculator. I uh, advertised, I really like this calculator here, uh, the Evan Miller calculator. Here we would make a comparison with a two sample t-test. And what we usually would put in are some raw data here that you see here. Um, but we don't have this raw data. However, we could, in theory, uh, look at sample summaries here. So we would need, for this, we would need a mean, a standard deviation and the counts. And then we can make a comparison. But again, we have the mean, we have the counts, but we don't have a standard deviation. So uh, it looks like this uh, option is also not uh, viable. What can we do? Now we could compare the confidence intervals and I try to draw the confidence intervals. So that would be paper one here. And here the confidence interval goes from say 25% to 35 percent like that and in the middle we've got our sample mean for paper one and that would be 30 percent and that for count data would be in the middle and for our paper two we have a scenario where we have also a confidence interval it's a little bit narrower like that. So this goes from 32% to 38% uh, with the mean x bar 2 uh, would be 35%. And again that is in the middle for P for our paper too. And now we are in this awkward position where our confidence intervals overlap. And just as a revision, we know that if confidence intervals don't overlap, this indicates that with a very strong likelihood, these two samples come from different populations. So they are different. So different here in this case. We also know that if we have this case here where the confidence interval totally overlap, it is very likely that these samples do not come from different populations. They do not represent different populations and therefore there is no difference. But what are we going to do 
if we have uh, this case here where they partially overlap. Now, our intuition tells us, well, there is not that much overlap here. So probably we have a case where these two um, papers describe a different reaction of patients to the drug. So most likely just our intuition tells us that female patients react differently to male patients. But how can we find out? Now, what we can do is we can use the information that we have and try to figure out what this standard deviation that we are looking for and that we need for our t-test, if we can figure that out. So the first thing that we uh, take into account is that we say this confidence interval that we have here. So here is our confidence interval. This first confidence interval would be given by x1 plus minus the margin of error. So this is basically the confidence interval. And what we can find here quite nicely is we can calculate what this margin of error is. That's not terribly difficult. That is just simply this part here. This here would be the margin of error. And for paper uh, one, this is very simple. All we need to do is we calculate the upper bound minus the mean. So that would be 5% here. And for paper two, this would be actually 3%. So that's uh, straightforward. Or I should be better say this is the margin of error. Let me remove that here. So here we've got the mean that was 30%. Here we've got 35%. Here the margin of error is 5%. And here the margin of error is 3%. So it's all in percent. We also need something that's called the degree of freedom. And that is just simply the sample size minus one. So in the first case, we had degrees of freedom 16 minus one, that gives 15. And in the second case, we had 64 minus one, so that gives 63. So what can we do? Now we know that the margin of error for count data is defined by the a critical t value, t crit, times the standard error of the mean, SEM, we know that the standard error of the mean is the estimated population standard deviation from our sample divided by the square root of n. And that is actually this s here that we are looking for. So if we've got a margin of error and we've got a sample size, and we have a t critical value, then in theory we can calculate our sample, our standard deviation. So all we need to do is we need to just simply uh, rearrange this uh, equation and we get s equals the uh, margin of error times the square root of the sample size divided by the critical t value. So we just calculated that, we know that. Now we need to find our critical t value. This is basically the critical t value that um, we would compare our samples with. And this critical t value that basically depends on our confidence interval that we want to have. And we would usually go for 
or actually this is what we had here, 95% confidence interval. And so this depends on the confidence interval and it also depends on the sample size. And the equation in Excel, we can ask Excel to calculate that. That would be t inf dot, we use a two-tailed test of the probability that is one minus the confidence interval and the degrees of freedom that we have and that we just calculated. So what we can actually do is we can calculate our critical t value. So here it is equals t dot inf to t. So here it comes already up. Uh, it asks us, that was the wrong one, I wanted this one. It asks us for the probability and the probability is basically our alpha 1 minus the confidence interval. So that would be 0 0.05 and the degrees of freedom that we've calculated that would be 15. So that's 15. So we get a critical t value of 2.13. We do that for this one here as well equals t dot t dot inf to t. Again, we have 0 0.05 and this time we have 63 degrees of freedom. And here we get a value very close to 2. Now, the good thing is if you if your sample size if the sample size is larger than 30, you usually don't even have to calculate the critical t value because the t critical value will be very close to the z score and this would be around 1.96. Uh, usually people just simply uh, go for 2. So for a sample size larger than 30, you can use a value of roughly 2. And you see the, the difference between this 1.96 and what we just calculated is not dramatic. And what we can do now is we can calculate our population, uh, the estimate for the population standard deviation that we've just uh, done. So all we need to do is we need to calculate the margin of error times the square root of n divided by the critical t value. So here we've got, uh, what have we got? We've got margin of error, 5 times the square root of n. So in our first case, that was 16. Square root of 16 is 4. 5 times 4 divided by our critical t value that we got here and that would give us a standard deviation of 9.38 and we can do the same thing for paper 2. So here we have our margin of error. The margin of error was 3 times our square root of n, that is square root of n square root of 64, that is 8. I don't need a calculator. And I divide it by our t critical value and we get 12. We don't need to worry about uh, the negative sign. Uh, we just uh, use this. I wonder why there is a minus sign. Ah, oh, I by accident I had a minus here. So, so we have standard deviation 9 point, let's 4, say 4 and 12 for this paper. And what we can do now is we can just simply go into our uh, calculator here. So, and go to the summary section here, make sure that this is clicked. So our mean for paper 1 was 30, 
Our standard deviation was 9.4 and our count was 16. And for sample 2 we have the mean 35, the standard deviation is 12 and the count is 64. And what we can do now is we can compare these summaries with each other. We get a nice print out here. And the important thing is what we get here is the p-value. And here our p-value is 0 0.083. Let's write this down. p equals 0 0.083. Three, And of course, we would have set an alpha at the beginning of uh, probably uh, 5%. So what we see is that P is larger than 5%. Our alpha, the willingness of making a type 1 error. And therefore, we would say there is no difference, actually, how male and female patients react to the drug. So we would have probably said our null hypothesis is no difference in how male and female patients react. H1 would be there is a difference in the gender, how they react to the drug. Now, we found that the p-value is larger than the significance level and therefore we can exclude or reject the null hypothesis. We, we, can, we, we, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Remember, if p is high, h naught can stay. So we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Fail to reject the null hypothesis. And we say male and female patients show no statistically significant difference uh, how they react to the drug. And that is even if we don't have any raw data, if we just have confidence intervals, then we can uh, use this approach. What if we don't have count data? What if we have only, say, count data or proportions? Well, again, in this case, if the data are big enough, if we've got more than, say, 30 measurements, then they usually converge towards this normal distribution here, or t-distribution at least, and we can use this approach. So I hope this makes sense and thank you very much for watching.